Hello there everybody, Sam Straits here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another Backman Steam Loco review. So, a little while ago, perhaps a month or two ago now, I did a review of the Backman A1 and it was so, so beautiful and people really enjoyed it that I decided to go ahead and purchase another similar Pacific from Backman and that is the A2. And the one I picked up was this one, it's in BR Green as you can tell and the running number is 60537 and the name of this is Bachelor's Button. Obviously last time I was a little bit stuck because I got a slightly older version of the A1 and I wasn't too sure really whether it was the same as the latest version that Backman were releasing. So this time I have picked up the latest version, or one of the latest versions anyway, in the modern packaging as you can see, uh, so that we can really get a sense of what the latest Backman Pacifics are like. And as you can see through the window there, this one really does look beautiful. So I bought this one from Hattons for quite a bargain. I think this only cost me £90 or something like that. It was second hand, uh, but it's a lot better than the RRP. I think Backman have sold these for £179.99, something pretty crazy like that. And if I just double check the price that Hattons are selling these for new is £119, so that is an astonishing reduction, isn't it, on the RRP. So as always, if you want to check these out, if you fancy just looking at them or maybe even buying one, there's a link in the description. Please check that out and you will be taken straight to the page where you can buy a beautiful Backman 82. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get this out and we will take a look and see just how good the latest version of the Backman 82 is. So yes, the Backman A2 in BR Green. Now, my favourite of the available liveries for these, as you probably know, is the LNER Green or the Doncaster Green. However, I am quite excited about this because most of the time when I'm buying LNER Pacifics like this, I will almost always opt for the LNER colours. Uh, but this time I've gone for the BR Green, so even though I, you know, it's not 100% my favourite livery, it's going to be really interesting and a little bit different for me just to be getting out a BR version. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Anyway, if I show you the end of the box there you can see that the uh, product code there is 31-526 it's a class a2 locomotive as you know the running number as i've already said is 60537 bachelor's button that's the name and yes it is in the br green early emblem and you can't see the tender right now but inside there yes it does have the early crest on it now if i show you the back of the box there is a brief history of the a2 there so if you want to you know pause and read that feel free to although as always i will do a little bit of a history session in just a second but for now I'm sure we're all desperate to see what this beautiful, well it's going to be beautiful, but apart from that we're going to be desperate to see what this is like. So let's get it out and take a look. And as I say, yeah, this is second hand, but I will only ever buy a second hand loco if it's in as new condition, because obviously I want to do a good accurate review of it for you. So let's get this out then. There is the blister, looking great, and I've already noticed that there's a massive hefty detail pack on there, so we'll have to take a look at that for sure. Uh, anyway, there's a little bit of paperwork in here. I won't show you any of the rubbish, but I will just show you the instructions and things. So, first of all, we have this. So this is the sheet for the Peppercorn A2 class 462 locomotive. I would have said it's more of a Thompson design really, isn't it? I think Peppercorn modified it, but uh, yeah, anyway, let's not split hairs over that. So yeah, there's a bit about running in, body removal, DCC fitting, etc. It also shows you how to fit the cylinder drain cocks and other such details, which is quite nice. And on the back of this, you also have the exploded diagram there, which is at least quite nicely done. It's nicely set out, isn't it? And everything's labeled. So you couldn't really ask for much more uh, just looking at that. And I think really, that's all the paperwork that's going to be of interest so without any further ado let's get this out and take a good close look so let's slide the cover off here and let's take a look at the detail packs and I will say packs because there's two so let's grab the first one so, I mean, just by looking at the detail pack, you can tell that this is quite a premium model. The cylinder drain cocks have been painted up, as you can see, into that lovely copper colour. Not always the case with the locos from Backman, but it is here. The vacuum pipes are painted, the cab doors are painted, you've got steps inside there. Yeah, really quite good that, isn't it? And the other detail pack, if I uh, swap, grab this one. Oh, this is very nice to see. So you have proper etched nameplates on there. They're not fitted to the model already. If you want to uh, have that little added bonus, you've got to fit it yourself, but that's not a big deal. And as I say, sometimes it is quite fun to be fitting a uh, little special touches like that, but full marked for having that included in the pack. That is really, really good. Right, let me just reattach that and we will get this lovely, lovely loco out. 
All right. Now, unfortunately, this brings us on to the first downside of this model because, as you can see, the tender is not connected electrically to the Loco in any way, which of course tells you that there are no tender pickups on this model. Now, in my opinion, a model that costs £179 should have all the bells and whistles it can possibly have. That is an extremely bold price tag, in my opinion. So for it not to have tender pickups, that is a little bit of a shame. And we'll talk more about performance later on, of course. But apart from that, the tender seems to be good quality. It's good and firm. It doesn't flex at all in the hands. It's got all the metal wheels, as you'd expect, despite not having any pickups on it. And yep, yeah, it's got some fair weight to it as well. So uh, yep, and it looks lovely as well, doesn't it, in that uh, early BR scheme. I do like the early BR crest. So that is lovely. Good marks on the tender so far apart from the fact that it hasn't got any pickups at all. And here is the locomotive, and uh, just like with the A1 really, the weight of this is quite astonishing. Uh, holding this in my hands I can tell once again that the running board on this is made of die cast metal, again just like the A1 was, and that means that it's got a lot of traction, it's got a lot of strength to it, and that's exactly what you want. So yes, uh, really got quite a good feeling about this. Right, let me hold these two together then, the loco and tender of course, just so that you can get a good view, and yes, together it does just look the part, doesn't it? Absolutely beautiful so yeah this is a class I've wanted to review for quite a while never done an A2 before so this should be fun all right here's a little bit of history on the class then and after that let's get this up onto the white background and I will show you it in uh, some detail so the Thompson A2 was a modern class of steam locomotives introduced just before nationalization in 1946 15 examples were built in that year for express passenger work the A2s were built at Doncaster, but only the first of the class was completed before Edward Thompson retired. The rest of the class were produced under Thompson's successor, which was of course Arthur Peppercorn, and that's probably why his name is on the instructions, who of course decided to make those modifications uh, to the design shortly after. So I don't know if they actually ran in service as uh, Thompson designs. But as you know, Peppercorn did change them. The class was said to perform reasonably well, but there were a few minor reliability issues caused by large unsupported gaps in the wheelbase. And after a reasonably short life, the A2s were withdrawn during the early 1960s, as most steam locos were, and very sadly, none were preserved. Okay, so there she is then, the Backman A2 number 60537, bachelor's button up against the white background. And this is an expensive model, and as I'm going to demonstrate, it isn't a perfect one, but you have to admit, don't you, seeing it like this, it is super, super impressive. So yes, right off the bat, I do like this one, and I'm really, really glad I bought it. So, positives to start with then, as I've already mentioned, we do have the die-cast running board here, which is absolutely fantastic. I do love to see that on a model, and like I say, it really does a lot for the weight and the pulling power and also when you've got it in your hands it just does wonders psychologically it feels like you've got a quality very very realistic model right there in your hands which I think is important when you've spent nearly 200 pounds as some people will have done with this Taking a look at the paintwork then, you can see that I think unlike the A1, the banding on this is absolutely spot on. I really can't fault that. It's done to a very high standard. The only problem really with the finish on this is this very, very obvious seam at the bottom of the boiler here, which is quite eye-catching, isn't it? It's a bit unfortunate that. Again, for such an expensive model, it's a shame that it has got such an unsightly feature as that. However, I think it's a good thing that it's not right here on top of the boiler where it will be very visible. So they've got to have an unsightly seam at least they've got it in a place that's not too conspicuous. In other places the painted detail is also very very well done as you can see the side of the cab here the running number is very nicely applied the builder's plate is good and legible I can't quite read it from where I am but I've looked at it in the past and it is definitely legible hopefully you'll be able to read that on the close-up here and of course you've got that lining around the cab and also lining along the running board and finally there's quite a bit of lining as you can see on the steam chest which all is done to a very high standard. You've got the pre-fitted bachelor's button nameplates or I should say pre-painted because they're not really fitted but as we saw in the detail pack you do have the option to fit the etched ones there if you want to however the painted ones there do actually look uh, fairly decent so uh, no massive complaints there looking at the front of the cab you can see the front facing windows which are glazed by the way in fact all of the windows on the uh, cab there are glazed as you can tell they have that lovely gold lining around them which just looks superb 
Now the smoke box door is also reasonably well detailed. You can see we've got a pre-fitted lamp on top there, which has got a little bit of paintwork on it. And on the door there, as you'd expect for a loco in this livery, you've got the running number and also the shed code. And looking a little further down onto the buffer beam, which is highly detailed by the way, you can see that we do have pre-fitted lamp irons just above there, which is quite unusual from Backman. I can't think of very many locos from Backman that actually have the lamps pre-fitted, so that's very, very good. And as I say, yes, the buffer beams are looking good and they are complete with sprung buffers, which is nice. Let me just demonstrate. Yep, there you go. And the front bogey there is also fitted with a NEM coupling. Well, it's got a NEM pocket, but it's also got a NEM coupling fitted into there as well, which is very, very nice. There's also quite a lot of separately fitted work going on. As you can see, the safety valves here are pre-fitted and made of metal, which is great to see. Sometimes you get the, uh, the, the plastic ones sliding in there, which isn't too good. But no, these are metal, and I think they look a lot better for it. Unfortunately, the reversing rod here is done in sort of black plastic rather than metal. Again, that is a little bit shoddy, perhaps, for such an expensive model. However, at least the reversing rod there hasn't been left out, which is quite good to see. Now, again, with this model underneath the boiler, you can see there is no detail detail in between the frames there. I'm pretty sure this was a three-cylinder locomotive, wasn't it? Which means there should probably be some sort of detail under there, but as you can see, it is a little bit plain there. And that does catch the eye. It's quite a reflective surface under there, which means it is quite obvious that there is detail missing there. Uh, but again, you know, it's not a huge criticism really, is it? Looking at the valve gear, you can see it is quite sophisticated there with the Walshirts valve gear. It looks just fantastic, doesn't it? And as always, it looks all the better when it's up and running. The die-cast running board has an awful lot of detail on it, both moulded and separately fitted. And as you can see, there's all, all sorts of stuff going on the side there. I think some of those is where the sand would be stored for when cold weather comes and they need to put sand behind the wheels to improve traction. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on there, isn't there, clearly? Up on top of the cab, you can see there's a lot of detail going on up there in terms of riveting. However, none of these air intake hatches do actually open, which is a little bit of a shame, but to be fair, it is only a gimmick, so I suppose it's fair enough that they've missed that out. And if we take a look inside the cab, unlike the A1, it is clear to see that the cab has been painted, which is great to see. It's clearly not the best cab in the world. The gauges have been left out, and it is just a couple of colours used inside there. However, the top of the cab is painted into the cream, which I think looks a lot, a lot more effective than the uh, also very expensive A1 did. So that is a big thumbs up. I really do like that. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the detail of this loco. There's not really very much in the way of pipe work, although of course you do have the separately fitted handrail and the uh, pipe going underneath there. But if there's not a lot of outwardly visible pipe work on the real thing, there's not going to be a lot on the model. It just stands to reason. So that is fair enough. Very quickly then, let's take a look at the tender. And as I've already mentioned, it is a beautiful looking tender. Loads and loads of riveting going on on the side there. And the paintwork is also similarly well done. You've got the early British Railways crest there, which is beautifully applied. And also all of the lining that comes with it around the edges there just looks great. The underframe is reasonably good. You have all of the brake rigging pre-fitted, which is nice not to have to do. And you can see that there's a water scoop just inside there. Now the coal on top of the tender is not very convincing. It isn't glossy. And well, it is a little, but it's not as glossy. I don't think it's made of metal, for example, like the more modern Backman coal is. It's not hugely convincing, but equally it's not terrible. And it is also removable, which means that if you're really not happy with it, you can replace it, which is just fine. And then around the back, admittedly, there is a lot of detail there. Even the wires that go up to the electric lamps there have been represented, which is very, very nice. Yep, handrails, lamp irons, little footholds there, more sprung buffers, a pre-fitted coupling hook. And of course, once again at the back there, a pre-fitted NEM coupling, which is just great to see. So there's a fair amount of detail on here. I would say that in some places the model is very slightly outdated. No tender pickups is a big one. Unsightly join lines in one or two places. And of course the plastic reversing rod. And a couple of other small features indicate that this isn't quite the fantastic model that the price tag suggested it would be. And you get that quite a bit from Backman. The price tag often builds the loco up to be something that it's not, which does sometimes lead to disappointment. Now I understand sometimes Backman bring out super duper brand new models with all the modern bells and whistles and in those cases I think you know if you want to set a high price tag I suppose that's fair enough but with a slightly older model like this which is starting to show its age a little bit I think that Backman should just have some respect for their loyal customers and be reasonable in their pricings I think really that's all it comes down to isn't it just being reasonable however I am really impressed with this the detail is pretty good it's not superb but it is pretty good and outwardly the thing looks just fantastic so overall very very pleased with this okay let's get this beauty down down onto the track then and we will test her performance. 
So there she is then, down onto the middle line, the beautiful Backman A2, and yes, yeah, she, she really does look a sight down there on the track, doesn't she? So I'm going to test her slow speed in just a second, but first of all, here's what she's going to be hauling. A whole big rake of BR coaches in the chocolate and cream livery, and there are seven of those, so that should be a really good test of her pulling abilities. So first of all, let's talk about performance then. Now, I've already mentioned the fact that she doesn't have any tender pickups, which has to be a mark against her, unfortunately. Also, as with the A1, there is no proper bearing system in this chassis at all. The axles go straight onto the Mazak, which is a little bit of a shame, uh, especially given the price, but it is fairly common with Backman. It does mean, though, that when she's running at a sort of medium speed, you get that rickety sort of metal-on-metal -metal grinding noise, which I really don't like, and it does affect the smoothness to an extent. However, the Loco is DCC ready. Uh, it has an 8-pin socket inside the Loco, obviously not the tender because there's no wires going there, and so it isn't a split chassis or anything like that. It does have proper pickups, but only on the three driving wheels on each track, which means that perhaps there might be a problem on express points. Certainly as the wheels get dirtier, that will become more pronounced, but uh, we'll give that a test and we'll see. But first of all, let's give it a little bit of slow speed and see how it does. So I'm just turning up the controller now. Let's give it some juice and see what happens. As you can see, she started to creep forward. So the slow speed itself is really quite good. I think that's going to definitely be a 4 or a 5. Let's uh, speed it up a little bit and try it over the express points. Oops. It was a bit jerky there, but that, was, that wasn't the engine's fault. That was me on the controller. But yeah, as you can tell, absolutely fine over the express points for now. I mean, after a six hours running and the wheels are a little bit dirtier, you might start getting reliability issues with there being so few pickups. However, if you're willing to keep the wheels and pickups clean, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So that is thumbs up. Right, let's test the power then and see if she can haul these seven coaches all right. Here we go. Try and be as gentle as I possibly can. Right, there we go. Well, she shifted them backwards all right, didn't she? So that has to be a good sign. But forward then, let's see how this works. Keep an eye out for wheel slip. And astonishingly, she actually moved them with basically no wheel slip. It was very impressive, that. Very nice. Right, let me show you what he's running alongside her then. So today I'm going to be going with the theme of l &ER Pacific, so if you want to look out for them all and name them in the comment section, uh, see if you can do it, if you fancy a challenge. There's also an odd one out if you want to look out for that one. But I'll give you the first couple, so here we have the A1 that I've talked about already quite a bit. It's another Backman one in the uh, Doncaster Green of course, and she's got just a medium sized rake of blood and custard teaks. And then on the inside line, I have yet another Backman Pacific. This time it is an A4, and it's Silver Link, of course, looking absolutely gorgeous in that livery. And that's basically all that's going to be running, so keep an eye out on the layout, and let's see if you can spot that odd one out. And uh, here comes the uh, A2 again, so let's get another shot of that. Oh, it's got, the, it's got it, though, hasn't it? I mean, despite the one or two minor flaws, it just has it, doesn't it? It's got that character, it's got the charm, and it looks just the part down on the track so can't fault it as far as general appearance goes and I do think this BR Green looks super super smart on her doesn't it but it does beg the question as to what is the most favourite livery out there I still think mine is the l &ER Green but uh, yeah the BR Green is certainly very very splendid but uh, compare it to this and it just doesn't get too much better does it and that of course is WP Allen which I didn't mention but yeah that's her name and uh, yes, I'm a sucker for the big four liveries, and uh, even the pre-grouping liveries, so... Yep, I think that will always win for me. Oh yes. I suppose the two Pacifics I have from Backman, the A1 and the A2, do run very much the same. The mechanisms are basically identical, as far as I can tell. It's not quite true with the A4, because my A4s are split chassis, so they are quite a bit different. But the A1s and A2s, pretty much the same. Runs good though, doesn't she? Definitely can't fault the performance when she's up and running, and look at the power. Slight incline here in the room, absolutely no slowdown, not even with seven coaches. And there's Silver Link, putting on quite a good show for us. Always a good run of that one, despite being a split chassis, but nope, she does it good.
So here are some of my ratings for the Bachmann A2 then. So detail first of all, 4 out of 5. I actually think the detail is really, really good. It's just missing one or two modern touches, such as the third cylinder of course, and obviously the painted cab as well, which left a little bit to be desired. Little things like that, but they all sort of add up. But overall, pretty good detail, 4 out of 5. Power though, 5 out of 5. That die-cast metal running board really does wonders for the pulling power. And as you can see, she's managing 7 coaches today without any trouble at all. Slow speed, 4 out of 5. The slow speed itself is alright. At the very, very slowest speeds, it's not the smoothest in the world, but very, very few logos are. However, lack of proper bearings in this model does mean that at more moderate speeds you get that sort of rattly sound of metal on metal and it just makes you wish that for close to £200 you would have got some decent bearings in there. That leads us on to quality then, again 4 out of 5, no tender pickups is a real shame for such an expensive model. Although apart from that I have to say the quality is top notch. Die cast metal construction, high quality materials, it's exactly what you want. Value though, unfortunately I've had to give this a 2 out of 5 because while the Hatton's price of £119 is easily reasonable, the RRP of £179.99 just seems too extreme for what this is. So overall then, that is uh, just a moderately good score of 7.30 out of 10, and into the ranking she goes at 32nd, just above the V3 and below the Bankman James. Now I do believe that this model is deserving of a higher score than that, however I do hold value for money very very highly, and if it hasn't got that it's not going to do well. So the model itself is excellent, but it all depends on the price for which you can find it. So despite the somewhat unforgiving total score, please don't get me wrong and think that this is a bad model. I actually think it's a really, really good model. It's just far too expensive for what it is. But do let me know, do you think I've been too harsh or do you agree with my ratings? Whichever is just fine. I can always try to adjust and represent the views of everybody. But uh, yeah, for me, I think it's just got to be good value as well as a good model. And if it gets everything right, then it gets the really high scores. So there you have it then folks, hope you enjoyed seeing that, that is uh, my review of the Backman A2. As always do let me know in the comments what you think about that and if there's anything you think I've missed and I ought to have talked about then uh, please do let me know because I always do appreciate that. But for now folks, thank you very very much for your company, hope you enjoyed that as always and I will see you very very soon. Cheers everybody.